my ravens and wolves. I hope you are having a good um, Saturday night. And this is a little update on Tim Norton's hired hitters plead guilty. So St. Louis, two out of the four co-defendants in the unalive of the grandson of the owner of Sweetie Pie's restaurants have pleaded guilty for their roles in the Red Drum for Hire scheme. Tarika Ellis and Well Yagnam pleaded guilty Friday to conspiring to commit Red Drum for Hire in the 2016 Red Drum of 21-year-old Andre Montgomery Jr. Montgomery's uncle, James Timothy Tim Norman of Los Angeles, is awaiting trial. Investigators and prosecutors say Norman had Montgomery killed as part of a plot to collect $450,000 in life insurance. Well, helped Norman to take out the insurance policy in 2014 that made Norman the sole beneficiary, according to prosecutors, and Ellis, they said, lured Montgomery to the place where he was unalived in St. Louis. So Travel Anthony Hill, 30, pleaded guilty June 3rd to conspiracy to commit Red Drum for Hire, as well as a separate count of Red Drum for Hire. Hill admitted to taking the life of Montgomery in exchange for $5,000 and was recorded discussing the act with his brother on calls from the jail. Um, I don't know about you, but isn't, like, isn't that like common knowledge that when you make them phone calls, they are always being recorded you got to worry about if there's always somebody on the other end listening or somebody's, you know, they're, they're just automatically recorded conversations. Well, I guess he didn't think so. So Hill's plea agreement had also implicated Norman and Ellis. So there was some plea deals being cut. Ellis was in a relationship with Tim Norman for years before the incident happened and had met Montgomery at Bottoms Up, a strip club in East St. Louis, where she worked as a dancer. The two had exchanged phone numbers. Norman had asked Ellis about Montgomery during a stay at the Chase Park Plaza Royal in St. Louis, telling her he was looking for Montgomery and needed help to find him. Ellis, knowing Norman was going to take some form of action, so she knew there was going to be some repercussions with this, against Montgomery, still agreed to help. This is what prosecutors are saying. Now, in the days leading up to the unalive, the incident that happened with the grandson, Ellis told Montgomery she was planning to be in St. Louis. So on March 13th, the day before the incident happened, Norman flew to St. Louis from Los Angeles. The next day, Ellis used a burner phone to talk to Montgomery and find out where he was, and then proceeded to call Norman. Ellis' phone placed her in the vicinity of Montgomery's the incident of where he was, you know, where he passed when he was hit around 8 p.m. March 14, 2016, in the 3,900 block of Natural Bridge Drive. Right after the killing, Ellis made another phone call to Norman and then started driving to Memphis. Norman later paid Ellis $10,000 in cash for her help. Ellis banked more than $9,000 over the next two days in three separate deposits in two different bank accounts. 
Now, Wham, according to his plea agreement, admitted to working with Norman in October 2014 to complete three fraudulent life insurance applications that included false information about Montgomery's net worth and background. So everybody is telling the T. And it's all pointing back to Tim Norman. So people are taking plea deals and they are just putting Tim Norman all up in the hot seat. Well worked in life insurance after a career in the music industry that included producing rappers Nelly's hit 20, the 2002 album Nellyville. Yagnum helped Norman obtain a $200,000 life insurance policy on Montgomery that also stipulated a $200,000 payout if Montgomery of something other than natural causes, as well as a $50,000 payout if he died within the next 10 years, 16 days after Montgomery's passing. Well, Yagnum placed a call to the insurance agency to try to collect the policy. Norman was ultimately unsuccessful in obtaining the payout because the insurance agency wasn't provided final police report, toxicology report, and the coroner's report necessary to process the claim. Ellis and Will are scheduled to be sentenced October 26. Hill is scheduled to be sentenced September 20th. Both Montgomery and Norman appeared on Welcome to Sweetie Pies, reality television show that ran for five seasons on the old network. After Montgomery's passing, TV clips from Welcome to Sweetie Pies circulated, showing Tim Norman mourning the passing of his nephew. He is now accused of setting up and even visiting the scene with his mother and TV crews in 2016 in one of the Sweetie Pies episode. Since Andre's passing, I haven't gone through this part of the city. You see him say, as he look around, Norman said on the show, Really, I've been avoiding it in this area ever since he has passed. So he was pretending to mourn the loss of Andrew Montgomery, knowing full well he was the cause of Andrew Montgomery not being on, walk, able to walk around on this planet. Everyone involved is taking plea deals and they're all pointing fingers toward James Tim Norman. September and October, the dates um, for Ellis and Will is October 26th. So we'll see what they get um, as far as a sentence go. And the same thing for Hill. Hill's sentence is coming up in what? Not that long. Next month is August, and then after that is September. So September 20th, he will be sentenced. So we'll see what these um, people, three, get as far as their sentence goes after accepting and taking a plea deal. On that note, I'm Goddess Raven, and this is Spilling the Tea, and I'll catch y'all later, okay? I got to go. Bye, y'all.
Got to go. Leave those comments in the comment section and tell me what you think of this case. Bye.